Hello everyone, my name is Griffin and we are back with another reaction video. We are reacting to another one of Isaac Butterfield's videos called The Problem with Whiteness. Now, I don't personally have a problem with anybody's skin color. I don't think there's a problem with anybody who's black, brown, blue, yellow, whatever fucking color your skin is. And there's certainly not a problem with people whose skin color is white. Anybody who keeps making a problem out of uh, somebody's skin color needs to fuck off and wake up to reality because just because somebody's skin color is the way it is doesn't mean anything about who they are as a person or their character. It's just what they were born with. So if you have a problem with their skin color, then you need to fuck off. Let's see what this video is about, shall we? G'day ladies and gentlemen, the Buttsman here. And on this channel, we love to talk about how much we hate the mainstream media and the people involved with it. We just don't trust it. And I think, well, they have proven themselves to be very uh, untrustworthy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I have discovered a Twitter page, an X page, that perfectly illustrates my point as to how much these people absolutely suck. Shall we indulge? Bloody oath we shall, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> the page is called Journalists Posting Their L's. <clears throat> and here's a great one. Whiteness is a pandemic. Thanks, Damon Young. You See, for something to be a pandemic, it has to be spreadable. It, it has to be be able to be caught by other people around the world. Whiteness is not something that you can catch or get sick from. It's just what you're born with. I never understood people's way of thinking when they look at somebody and all they can see is the color of their skin. I'm sorry, but the way you were raised and what you've been listening to, I feel sorry for you. I really do. Because for you to grow up being brought up in an environment and being taught that the color of one's skin is a problem, I'm sorry, but you're it's really horrible. Like I've said before, there's nothing wrong with the color of someone's skin. There's nothing wrong with white people. There's nothing wrong with black people. There's nothing wrong with brown people, uh, yellow people, red people. It's the only thing anybody should ever be judged on is the content of their character. That's it. If the content of somebody's character sucks and is fucking horrible, then yes, they are a horrible person. Despite the color of their skin, their religion, their creed, where they were brought up, where you know, and all this other stuff, none of that stuff matters. It is the content of one's character that matters. It is a sad reality that we live in that people seem to make the color of one's skin a such a giant fucking problem. I know this is a minority of people, it's not the majority, but it is still a problem because we have very impressionable children. Their minds are like sponges. And you're teaching kids this shit. For it to go away, for people to stop seeing color. Morgan Morgan Freeman said this, is that for racism, he was asked, how do we stop racism? And you know what his answer was? His answer was, we stop talking about it. We stop bringing it up. That is a great way to stop it. If we stop talking about it, stop focusing on the color of people's skin, it will go away within maybe a generation or two. It will go away. People will stop talking about other people's race. Racist? Whiteness is a public health crisis. It shortens life expectancies, it pollutes the air, it constricts equilibrium, it devastates forests, it melts ice cap, it sparks and funds wars, it flattens dialects, it infests consciousness and it kills people. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Oh my god. Where? What is this? Is the root an actual thing? The root. Let's find out because that's what it's from. Black news. Okay. Guys, that's not okay. That's that's supreme racism right there. Oh my god, it's a real article. It doesn't come up when you see When people the one thing I find hilarious is you could tell nobody knows anything about history. As soon as they say you cannot be racist to white people, people have no idea what it's like to feel race racism. Go back in history and you'll find out just how much of a problem it has been for white people as well. <clears throat> and to for other people to say that white people have never experienced slavery, <laughs> yeah, you have no idea about what every single race throughout the entire world has gone through throughout history. It was only around... Um, oh, what was it? I think it was the 1600s? No, no, maybe not. Maybe earlier than that. I can't remember. It, it was it was very... It was around the Inquisition, um, I think, where um, they, they stopped going after their own race and for some reason decided to go after people of colored skin. I think it was around the Inquisition. I can't remember when, honestly. I It was a while ago that I... That I uh, read about it and heard about it um but it's it's this stuff man it, this this it makes me feel fucking stupid just hearing about this how let, let's 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 go back and it it is a health crisis it shortens life expectancy pollutes the air constricts equilibrium devastates forests melts ice caps sparks wars Flattens dialects, infests concert, infects, infests consciousness. Sorry, can't fucking speak. And it kills people. How is whiteness connected to any of that? And is it white supremacy is a virus that, like other viruses, will not die until there is no bodies left to infect? which means the only way to stop it is to locate it, isolate it, extract it, and kill it. <laughs> now, there are still white supremacy groups. Don't get me wrong. They, they still exist. And those people, yes, they are a problem. But to say that whiteness as a whole does all this stuff speaks to how little intellect you fucking have. I'm sorry, but I, I don't understand why people perpetrate or not perpetrate um i don't know but i don't understand how people keep wanting to keep racism alive all it it just keeps dividing us as a people we we i don't understand why people cling so hard to racism how does it in any way shape or form better your life other than to portray yourself as a hateful, bigoted, ignorant person. I don't get it. Let's go back to the... Search it on The Roots uh, website, but it is here. It goes on to say it kills people, white people and people who are not white, my mum included. There will be people who die in 2050 because of white supremacy-induced decisions from 1850. Let's see. Atlanta shooting rampage. Motive unknown. Fears attacks. Linked to crimes against Asian Americans. I don't have much to add here today. That hasn't already been said. Uh, whiteness is a public health crisis. It shortens life expectancy. Blah 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 blah. And it, whatever he said. White supremacy is a virus. Yeah, sure. White supremacy is bad. Very very bad. But do all white people exhibit white supremacy? Here's the problem. Some people would say yes, absolutely. And here in lies the big issue because you're saying that white supremacy is a virus and there are people out there that say all white people are white supremacists. So we're all a virus, good on us, I guess. Like other viruses, it will not die until there are no bodies left for it to infect, which means the only way to stop it is to locate it, isolate it, extract it, and kill it. Holy shit. 
That isn't good. Good on you, Damon Young, you horrible person. Here's another one. Everybody hates us. The growing abuse of journalists. Now that is something I can get behind. Journalists often wear their battle scars with pride. Thick skin. Ever since this woke culture came into play, journalism has gone down the fucking drain. It has decided to go... It decided to stand on the edge of a cliff, look down and say, yeah, let's jump. Jumped head first and just without a parachute. It... It's rare you see legitimate, genuine journalism anymore. They, this, how is any of this woke, dumbass shit considered journalism? All you're doing is lowering the IQ of, the, of humanity as a whole. You're making us dumber and more ignorant with bullshit like whiteness is a pandemic. In tabloid hacks adopted the mill wall mantra no one likes us and we don't care they die down who mate no one likes you because you are fucking bought bought by the government I, I let me find something this is what i was looking for this is from william e cobby the former head of the cia acknowledged today this is from 1977 which means they were doing it before and i guarantee they're doing it after that the cia's efforts from the last three decades so from the 40s to the 70s to mold foreign opinion had resulted in some instances in which bogus propaganda planted by the cia overseas had been treated as genuine by american news organizations the reason no one trusts you people is because you've lost all of our trust. We grew up seeing you all on the news and speaking with your ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the nightly news. Here's what's happening around the world, that type of voice. But now we know you are bought. You will say whatever you're told to say by the government or the highest bidder. We know that. This is why we don't fucking like you. And the more that people distrust the media, the better. Let's fucking move on from those pricks whinging. The day yeah see the thing is with media and everything that you learn you can't trust everything that you read and hear one of the best things you can do even in school is question i don't care if it annoys the ever-living fuck out of your teachers question pretty much everything because even the woke culture has just infected schools and it's 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 horrible it's infected schools it's expect, infected media it's infected our government it's infected every fucking day of life to the point where misinformation is now slowly becoming a uh, fucking truth at least into the eyes of the ignorant dumbasses of the masses at this point you need to if you're going to research something make sure what you're researching corroborates with multiple other things that say the exact same thing. You can't just go off something that has been cherry picked and say, yep, that's right, right there. No, you, if you learn something and you want to try and teach it to the world, make sure that multiple other things say the exact same thing and multitudes of studies have been done on it to prove that it is right. Don't believe everything question everything hey, my son called me a f can i say that word on youtube it's blurred for a reason it rhymes with maggot <clears throat> there is for every child straight or gay a moment when he or she stops believing that his or her parent is omniscient <clears throat> omni ominousant ominousant Om omniscient ominousant i think it means knowing everything and i know that because i googled it and they start to push the boundaries my son had been playing with that line for a while then one day he called me a maggot by gays with kids look as i i know my parents have realized this i have yet to prove my mom wrong on anything <laughs> which is more than likely a good thing but there will come a time in a parent's life where their child will stop believing everything they say because like this is Parents are not um not are not omniscient. They can't know everything, they can't see everything, they can't hear everything. And they can't be there for everything. 
And you're going to come to a point where your child starts growing up and they're going to start questioning some things. Now, you got to make sure your kids don't start being combative to the point where they start calling you shit like, you know, this one does. And the thing is, there, there are also some parents who believe that um, because they are a parent, because they brought this kid into life, that they deserve respect. That they des that they deserve a lot. No, no. Even as a parent, you have to earn the respect of your child. You have to show them that you are worthy of getting respect from him. You have to show him how to show respect and how to make sure he is able to receive respect. That is one thing as a parent you must do. If kids start calling if your kids start calling you names and shit and combating you on pretty much it, don't get me wrong, you'll get in arguments with your kids. That's just a way of life. But if you get to the point where your kids are very combative with you, start calling you names, then you're maybe you want to reevaluate how you're raising your kid. Because that's not a very good thing. But like I said, don't get me wrong, you're going to get in arguments with your kids. It's just the way of life and you know, way of raising a kid. But yeah, you... you yeah, parents are not omniscient. Contributor helping gay dads navigate fatherhood. I tell you what, if you that, that's that's another thing. Parents who have kids who realize that they are gay, I include lesbian in that because that also means gay. You have to make sure that they are brought up in an environment where they they feel comfortable enough where they can confide in you or they can open up to you that they are possibly gay you can't make i mean of course they're going to feel hesitant they're going to feel anxious and worried and that's just the, just the thing but you got to make sure that they feel like they're able to open up to you you can't make them feel like they're so afraid to open up to you that they never will if, you, if your son is calling you the maggot word, it's pretty funny. I'm sorry. It's, uh, well, actually, it depends what age the son is. If the son's like 50, then that's not very nice at all. But if his first word is maggot, that's hilarious. <laughs> I opened my marriage at 73 and I was not prepared. This is great for, <laughs> by Anonymous uh, from Slate, whoever Slate is. Open relationships, open marriages. This, in, in a world where monogamy is the dominant way of a relationship, you have to be very, very careful when you want to open up your relationship, be it in a marriage, um, if you're engaged, just in a regular relationship. Polyamory is not for everyone, and you have to make sure you're okay with it. Because if you're not okay with it and you open up the relationship, well, you just fucked yourself. <laughs> so I, I caution anybody who wants to be in an open relationship. Is I took a huge risk hoping for a huge reward. 73 years old and you open up your marriage. Who is opening up their marriage at 73 years old? Surely at 73, you're happy to just sit there and cop the smells, the just shit attitude. The annoyance of old people and the old partner that you've now fucking come to spend every single moment with. Because here's the thing. Here's what people won't tell you. Old people suck. They are shit. I grew up thinking that old people are so cute and lovely and sweet. No. Wait until your own old people, your family, get actually old. Anyone over the age of 70 should be put down. Today. And they certainly shouldn't be having sex. This week we talk to Lucia de Ganas. I don't want to imagine my grandma doing that. I really don't. <laughs> my grandma is the sweetest lady in the world. I've met a few old people. They're nice. Not all old people are going to be nice. They're, they're just ornery and have problems with the world. But, you know. A suit. Why is it a pseudonym then? Why can you just call her Kate? 73 year old who reportedly opened her decades long marriage in order to have more satisfying and fulfilling sex in her sunset years. Just have an apple pie, you old. B she was wholly unprepared for what happened. I'll tell you what happened. You got jammed, all right, by some big 
fucking hairy young man looking for some good... What am I even fucking talking about, ladies and gentlemen? What I'm saying is this granny got some good sex and then poor old Grandpa Joe, who can't even get an erection anymore, he saw this happening and I bet you, I just bet you, he probably it got was blue a chew. young black man with a 12-inch cock and old Joe's running around with something that looks like a fucking Viagra pill. It's not okay. Poor Joe. R.I.P. Joe. This is from Vice. <laughs> I made my own DIY birth control by pushing my balls into my body and this man looks exactly like someone who would, just to enjoy the feeling and the sensation, push his balls into his body. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you are, well, ladies, you may not know that men can actually push their balls into their body if they try hard enough. And I'm, can you? I don't think I've ever tried. Can you push ball? You can up to a certain um, limit, then your balls just, just drop back out. But to push it so far into your body, yeah, that would be fucking painful. Balls into body. It's quite normal for momentarily push your testicles into the inigluel canal far enough to empty the scrotum. Ladies and gentlemen, get out there and empty your scrotum. <laughs> Give it a bit of a breathing room, <laughs> let the air get in there, you know, get rid of the mold and shit. But anyway, yeah, this fucking different bit of gear. Uh, Samuel Flambard, an advocate for heat-based male contraception. So your balls are on fire and now you can't have babies. Mate, fuck off. All right, just why would you write this? Why? This is an interesting one. No, Mitch McConnell didn't have a stroke. In fact, he's healthier than ever. Now, you may not know who Mitch McConnell is. Maybe you're not from America. He's an American uh, senator. And uh, so this this lady, Constan, Costan. I'm sorry, but anybody over the age of 70 who's in politics needs to retire. We There needs to be an age limit in our government and a term limit, an age limit and a term limit. If you are 70 or older, you need to retire. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. Because at this point, we can't really trust anybody who's over 70. Your mind literally is deteriorating. <laughs> Especially with this guy who seemed to have had a, you know, blue screen moment a couple of times. And look at our fucking president. He can't seem to form, form proper coherent sentences without drifting off in his own mind. I'm sorry, but the only one that I've seen that actually still seems to have his faculties about him is Bernie Sanders. And he's an old fuck and he needs to retire. Not not to sound mean, but he, he seems to be, you know, still there. But if you are 70 or older, we, we need to forcibly retire them. And I've heard this other thing is that um, for like if if you're in government and if you move up into the next position of your governmental job, whatever it is, and the, you can only move up, you can never go back down. And once you're done with that part of your job, like if you, excuse me. Like if someone moves up to senator or someone moves up to governor and if they can't get to the presidency or whatever that the next step and if their term is done they can no longer go into that position they can't go into a lower position once they retire from that they're done no more done and we need to do something about the fucking lobbyists too hecury um from global news is uh, reporting that, no, he, he's healthier than ever. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's go to YouTube and see how healthy he is. Okay, here he comes. Senator Mitch McConnell freezes mid-speech at U.S. Capitol. No, he wouldn't have done that. He's healthy, of course. A lot of people here. Briefly left the press conference on Tuesday after stopping mid-sentence and staring off into space for several seconds. What's that yes, big man, sign? Everyone. Old love's holding uh, We're on a path to finishing the... Might NBA. be Joe Biden's notes. Uh, this week. 80 fucking yes he, he he needs to be done he needs he is i'm sorry anybody that is 70 or older is no longer really connected with the current generation with the current things that are going on they're still stuck back in their own days just they need to be done 81 was out of the senate for almost six weeks earlier this year after falling and hitting his head he's 81. good bipartisan cooperation 
and a string of uh, yep that's healthy that's health <laughs> right there oh that's just You're embarrassing in front of people like that for seconds look at old mate on the left he's just looking and going fuck that's wish i was that healthy are you good no i'm healthy i'm killing it Hey bitch, come with me. Let's uh we can't believe how healthy you are. We're gonna go and take you straight to Mount Sinai and just run some tests on you because you're that healthy. Well said, Mitch. McConnell later returned to the press conference and answered some questions from the press. Asked about what happened, McConnell said he was fine. Uh McConnell later returned to the press conference and answering questions from the press, asked what happened. McConnell said he was fine. Of course he's fine. He's healthy, you bigots. Stop being so ageist. Here we go. The Guardian reports, hate body odor. You're more likely to have right-wing views. Who the fuck likes body odor? B.O. stinks. I reek. I have got hairy underarms and they are just plain awful. I don't care how much soap. I've seen so many of these trends also on TikTok and Twitter and all this other stuff where it's like, here's what this says about you if you like this. Here's what this says about you if you watch this. Here's what this says about you if you play this. Here's what this says about you if this, if this, if this. <laughs> I don't... Because you like one thing, it doesn't mean something else. You are reading way too fucking much into this. If you have body odor... It doesn't mean you're this. If you play this game, it doesn't mean you're that. If you hit like this, if you watch this, if you... Just shut the fuck up, people. It doesn't mean anything at all. I mean... I... Because I play some games, I watch some movies, I watch some videos, I watch... I listen to some music. It doesn't mean anything at all about me in this other way. I just like those things. That's all that it means. Same thing with other people's. You, everyone needs to stop reading so much fucking into it. It's like, it's about it's it's about the same thing as those people who think the constellation, me, uh, like uh, an Aries or a Taurus, goes with this or that. Or I can't date you because you're this. Oh, Mars is in this sort of phase, so I feel this or I have to do this. You're about as crazy as those people. Shut the fuck up. You use how many prayers you give to the, the follicles under your little stupid little wings. Your body hair stinks, mate. And I don't give a fuck if you think it smells like little roses, particularly if you're a young lady out there trying to change <clears throat> the world by growing body hair. I'm sorry, I don't understand this. This is the one trend I could never fucking understand. Women are so fucking confusing. How is... Growing body hair or armpit hair defeating the patriarchy or doing anything for a woman other than ugh. Sorry, but personally the only hair that for me The only hair that should be on a woman's body is on her head and you know, you know the eyebrows That's, that's about it Just this is just mm, very very unattractive at least to me. I know there's some people who like this. You Nothing against you guys. You all are weird, but you know, you like what you like. You stink, your family stinks, and everyone who's ever met you fucking stinks. Mm -hmm. what, what am I talking about? I don't know. All I'm saying is having right wing. Why would anyone write this article? No wonder no one wants to read fucking journalism anymore. Oh, this is from The Australian. Can the family provide us with all the love and care we need? Not according to author Sophie Lewis, who argues... Yes, a family can. A family can provide everything kids and the people within the family need. That's all you need to know. They can provide everything. They can provide love, security, respect, food, a home, everything a family needs. They can provide it. As long as you are able to let them. Mother love is fiction and families are oppressed. Oh my God. People are really out there to destroy the family unit. It's weird. I know it's sort of like a, um, a bit of a conspiracy that people want to def destroy the family unit. But 
There is a well, one of the major people I think that have a problem with the family unit is modern day feminists. They seem to have a problem with a lot of women who genuinely want to be a stay at home mom to take care of the kids, take care of the house, and want to take care of their husband. There, there was this lady um, a few years ago who hap was happily a stay at home mom. She took care of the kids. She took care of the house. She cooked her husband's food. She made him breakfast. She made him a lunch to take home to work. She took care of him. And my God, the feminists blew the fuck up. They, they attacked this poor woman who she was genuinely happy doing what she was doing. It's just these women thinks, think that he's oppressing her or some stupid fucking shit. There's nothing wrong with women who want to be like that. They're they're one of the few people who are It's like women like that in in families like that, they are the heart of the family. They're one of the ones that keep the family together and happy because they're taking care of everything and the man is take is doing all he can to make sure that she can be a stay-at-home mom and do what she wants. And there are these modern day feminists who are out there to, for some vindictive reason, destroy the nucleus. Uh, I think it's called the nucleus family, a nuclear family, or I can't remember what it was called. It's it's like they have some sort of problem with the uh, a family unit. I don't get it. Movement, particularly amongst young women, that they just you know. They see it as oppression, like getting married is oppression, all that type of stuff. If you pick the right partner and don't pick a fucking dickhead, then you're probably going to have a really nice life. Anyway, uh, the Washington Post reports, yes, kink belongs at Pride, and I want my kids to see it. No. It... Right, a regular Pride parade is fine. You want to be proud of being gay, les or gay, trans, bisexual... Go right ahead. That's it's it's fine. Don't bring kink into it. Because there are kids that are there. I don't know why you bring your kids to these fucking pride parades. But leave kink out of it. Kids don't need to know about that side of the of, you know, the spectrum. They don't need to know anything about the kink world, the fetish world, nothing about that. They don't need to see it. They don't need to hear it. They don't need to know about it. Just leave kink out of pride. If you want kink, do it in the confines of your own home, away from kids. Let's find the definition of kink. In human sexuality, well, we've already found out it has something to do with sex, so kids shouldn't be involved. Kinkiness is the use of non-conventional sexual practices, concepts, or fantasies. Ladies and gentlemen, your kids should not be seeing it. The Daily Mail reports, my boyfriend's cancer battle was ruining my mental health, so I left him. Now I'm running a marathon in his honor. You are a a of the highest order. Oh my God. Oh, my boyfriend's dying. I'm so depressed. I know, I'll leave him. But when he does die, I'll raise fucking 300 bucks for him. From the San Francisco Chronicle in... I've been to San Francisco, it's the worst part of the world. Ultimately, hate of bicyclists come from the same place as racism, sexism, homophobia, and transphobia. No! No, 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 cyclist. You cannot claim that people hate... People hate cyc... A lot of people hate cyclists just because they're in the fucking way of cars. They think they can be on the fucking road. You want to ride your bicycle? Go on the fucking sidewalk. Stay out of the goddamn highways and roads where cars are supposed to be and not bicycles. You dumb fox. You because they are also racist, sexist, and homophobes. No, you are not oppressed. You are idiots in Lycra. Shut up. Go away. Get off the road. From the Daily Star, my boyfriend moans his own name during sex. <laughs> I didn't know my wife was a journalist. <clears throat> this is from The Guardian from Awa Mahadi. Men are less likely to wear masks. Another sign that talks about... <laughs> There is no such thing as toxic masculinity. There is no such thing as toxic femininity. Femininity and masculinity in and of themselves are not toxic. They are necessary. 
there are what is known as toxic people. Us people who think logically are not actually smart know this. And we're tired of you dumbass bullshit saying that there's such things as toxic masculinity, toxic femininity. Hey, Mahadi. If women are hesitant about the vaccine, it's because the health industry hasn't earned their trust. Oh, Maha God. Mahadawi. So there's two here. One from the 16th of May 2020 and one from the 19th of December 2020. Men are less likely to wear masks, another sign that toxic masculinity kills. And then the next article, six months later or so, uh, if women are hesitant about the vaccine, it's because the health industry hasn't earned their trust. Ooh. Can't comment about that on YouTube, so we'll move swiftly onwards. My seven-year-old cousin is a sexist bully. <laughs> seven-year-old huh? cousin's a legend. All right, one more. Let's do this. The Huffington Post, personal. I got inseminated in a Burger King bathroom just off Route 57 and Atticus, my son, who's watching this in the future. That is exactly how I met your mother. <laughs> Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. And just remember, anyone who calls himself a journalist is a <laughs> big or motherfucker piece in the Middle East. Me dick stinks. Toodle au revoir. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, this was a wonderful video. <laughs> so many stupid people out there in the world. I swear to God. Oh, there are some days I wish a meteor would just hit us and we could just reset humanity. But, you know. I hope within a few generations that humanity will start seeing how stupid it has been and just wake up to itself. I highly doubt it'll happen, but I hope it will, and it probably won't be in my lifetime. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If there, uh, I would like to know what you all think of this. Please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your opinion. If there are any other videos you'd like to see me react to, please make sure to comment them down below or over on my Discord page. Link to that is in the description. I do have a Twitch channel that I stream to every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturdays at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, please uh, go give me a follow over there, and I would love to see you all over there as well. Links to all my stuff is in the description below. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.